आज तो तुम लोग का कैंसिल हो गया ना हाँ सर हो गया कैंसिल तो आप देख रहे हैं मतलब इसमें लिख अच्छा हाँ सर थोड़ा लेट जाता है पर मुझे आप आपका पूरा मतलब जो भी ये हम लोग को स्क्रीन दिखती है वेबेक्स पे वो दिखा रहा है अच्छा ओके सर आज थोड़े आप स्ट्रेस में लग रहे हैं अरे हम थक गए हैं अरे ऑनलाइन हो गया वो नहीं सर वैसे <laughs> हाँ सर वैसे आप चहकते रहते हैं ना नहीं ऑनलाइन चैटिंग चल रहा है अच्छा तो सर आप वहाँ पे भी कनेक्टेड हो मतलब मोबाइल अच्छा आ रहा है हाँ सर ऑल थैंक्स ऑल गोज टू आवाम सी पहले उसी ने चालू किया हम्म और आपको भी ठीक है अब वे विल नॉट चैट समथिंग एल थी ऑनलाइन नो हेलो हाय हाउ आर यू हाउ आर यू गुड गुड सो माय सेल्फ सुधांशु या आई 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 थिंक आई आई हैव सीन योर ऑफ कोर्स पिक्चर्स दे देवर मेड आई 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 या सो यू कैन सी इफ अ प्रेजेंटेशन इज वर्किंग श्योर आई विल आई विल जस्ट शेयर माय पीपीटी Yeah. Can you see it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so if I if I put it on the slide, so you can see slides, so am I right? Yes, yes, yes. Very clearly. Okay. Now I have to find a way to move this, move this, uh-huh. move this video. Ah, the video? Hey. No, no. Your video is coming, right? Ah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. उसको कहीं मूव कर सकते हैं लेट मी फाइंड आउट या आई थिंक आई कैन आई कैन डू समथिंग अबाउट इट ठीक है क्योंकि क्या हो रहा है कि वो एक ही स्क्रीन पे वो पीपीटी भी है और ये भी है अच्छा हाँ ये तो इसको कैसे वो करें आई थिंक आई कैन वो मिनिमाइज का उसमें कुछ है क्या इसी वो मिनिमाइज का क्या है कि आजकल सब स्लाइड जो है वो थोड़ा बिजी बिजी हो जा रहा है 
जगह बच नहीं रहा है ऊपर में ऑप्शन आ रहा है क्या आपका फ्लोटिंग पैनल व्यू सो एक्टिव स्पीकर व्यू देन देर इज वन दैट सो एक्टिव स्पीकर एंड थमनेल व्यूज एंड देन सो ग्रेट ग्रीड व्यू ओके तो ग्रीड व्यू में तो वो इसको छोटा करने के लिए क्या करेंगे या आई थिंक दिस इज फाइन आई विल जस्ट पुट इट हाइडिंग समवेयर ऑन द टॉप ठीक है जब इसको क्लिक करेंगे तो आ, क्या बोलते हैं इसको हाँ ठीक है कोई बात नहीं आई आई हैव फिगर इट आउट इसमें कोई दिक्कत नहीं लेकिन आपको पूरा स्लाइड दिख रहा है ना उसमें कोई ओके हाउ आर यू हाउ आर थिंग्स इन इन कानपुर गुड ऑनलाइन क्लासेस Yeah, when 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 did did your semester start? Did it start uh, in time or got it, it got delayed? Yeah, it was slightly delayed, but our mid semester is over. Oh, the mid semester is already over. Yes, so <laughs> there is no vacation this time. No Durga Puja, nothing. <laughs> I was, yeah, I I it's a it's a problem this time. Yes, yes. So this is also going online right now, YouTube live. Yeah, I I saw that that it is online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So But, I can uh, see it is working well. Oh, okay. Miss, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw there is a link there, but I didn't. Yes. Okay. So I am using my mobile to see whether it is working or not. So it's working well. Our students are doing very. Good job. <laughs> no, I, I know, Miss. I, I see that if, if they are not there, then we will be in so much of trouble with online things. <laughs> yes, yes. They can, they can do really good things. Yeah. Yeah. So, now in Bangalore, me, what is the situation? Students, look. Now in beach, me, a little problem uh-huh. happened. Now it's fine, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, this uh, this is unpredictable, right? Uh, COVID. So sometimes it is good, sometimes it is bad. <laughs> but i think uh, overall uh, the cases in country is going down so is in bangalore yeah kanpur ke andar hum log campus ke andar ek time pe cases kuch jyada ho gaye the kuch 50 ke aas pass ho gaye the acha acha but now kabhi aata hai kabhi do you know few cases are there but not so alarming so we are managing lekin kabhi pata nahi chalta wo nahi chalta hai na ki agar Yes, you know, know, nobody knows. Yes, correct. Satarta hati durghatna hati wala hal hai. Abhi to France mein fir se emergency laga diya hai. Sun rahe the ham. Kya hai? Kya rahe the ham? Hmm. Koi dusra dusra koi upaya nahi hai kyunki kya hai ki if you ek agar kuch bhi case hai, agar mali ya Bangalore mein agar ek hazar case bhi hai, to kabhi bhi explode kar sakta hai. Yes, yes, correct. Oh, so, wohi sahi explode hua hai. <laughs> <laughs> तो ये कि जब तक ये पूरा खत्म नहीं होगा या जब तक इसका कुछ पता नहीं क्या क्या इसका एंड है बट एज ऑफ नाउ इट लुक्स लाइक दिस इज बिकमिंग नॉर्मल एंड आई आई थिंक सो एक्सेप्टिंग पीपल आर आल्सो एक्सेप्टिंग इट बट नॉट मच मींस ऑफ कोर्स देयर इज ऑलवेज अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ नॉस्टैल्जिया कि पुराना में अच्छा रहता है सबसे मिलते ये वो बट समथिंग इज ऑलवेज बेटर देन Yes. अभी हमारे भी स्टूडेंट्स वापस आ रहे हैं मतलब आईटी कानपुर में भी सब लोग आ रहे हैं सब लोग नहीं वी वी कॉल टू बैचेस नॉट थर्ड बैच विल कम आई थिंक ऑन इलेवेंथ इलेवेंथ नवंबर सो सिक्स हंड्रेड है और मतलब कैंपस के अंदर सिचुएशन ठीक है हाँ ठीक है <laughs> चल रहा है <laughs> वही आप बोले ना तब क्या हो रहा है नोबडी नोज तो मोनी कुंतला इज हियर हेलो मोनी मोनी कुंतला सर हेलो सर हेलो हेलो आई हैव हाउ आर यू आई एम फाइन सर हाउ आर यू गुड गुड सो थैंक यू फॉर सेंडिंग मी ऑल द लिंक्स एंड सेंडिंग मी रिमाइंडर आल्सो We'll start at four. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. 
So, Moni Kuntala, you will handle it, right? Yes, sir. I can. Okay. Okay. So, I will make you co-host, huh? Okay, sir. Uh. Okay. I made you co-host. You want me to make any more co-hosts? I can make many. <laughs> then, uh... Sir, make Nilesh sir also co-host. Nilesh sir is also here. Okay, yeah, Nilesh. Nilesh. Unmute sir, you have to. I am in another meeting. Are you? I am going to talk to you. I am not going to talk to you. Oh, Praveen is already here. <laughs> Praveen is here. I will just say hello to Praveen. Hi, Praveen. Hi, Nilesh. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, but I'm sorry, you know, there is some person who is just not stopping to talk, so I have to somehow... <laughs> no, no, this is all right. I, I, know the, I know the issues of <laughs> multiple <laughs> meetings and... It was supposed to get over by 3.30, bhai sahab, janaab, bandi nahi kar rahe. Nilesh, you are on YouTube now. I am on YouTube, okay. Achha, wa naam nahi liya, mene kisi ka. Okay. I, I will join, okay. So then you got co-host, aap hi rahiye. Rajiv, bada dikh rahe mujhe, Rajiv Mukherji hai, RM. No, no, Rajdeep is not. Where did you see? No. No, I no, saw no. his arm. Achha, achha. Thik hai. But we'll start on, on time. So that's true. Yes, yes. Monikuntala, can you call Shikhar also? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shikhar has joined. Just, yeah. Okay. Shikhar, I am making you co host as well. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Kumar is already there. Yes, yes. Okay. 
Hi, how are you? This is Shikhar Jha. Um, I don't think you will uh, recall me, but uh, when you were joining IIT Bangalore, I was actually living there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we talked with each other. Oh. <laughs> no, I, 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 but it's nice to see you here. I, 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 I don't. Uh, I, okay, I, sorry about my memory. No, no, it's okay. I mean, uh, thought of intro going on at that point. I was actually uh, asking you about uh, Professor Datta. I was applying there for PhD, and then I oh. ended up with Professor Rishi Raj. And oh, okay. uh, I was actually also consulted you about uh, how his lab is and what kind of uh, work he is doing. And oh, so my okay. PhD happened to have happened on the uh, electrical field effect on the flash printing of ceramics. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In class centering. He... So, were you contemporary? Or did you have any sort of overlap with uh, uh, Devendra? Devendra Yadav? Oh, of, course, of course. So, yeah. when he came, I had my PhD and I was leaving for a postdoc. So, I had overlap okay. with him. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 when did you, and when did you join uh, Kanpur? Uh, last year, June. Last year, June. So, oh, so. About one and a half year now. Yeah. How are you liking it? Great. <laughs> yeah, it is. Other, it than is. The, other than the weather, I'm enjoying it very much. The uh, weather is. You you will get used to of the weather. It's actually. Uh, it's nice actually. <laughs> yeah, sitting in Bangalore, you could say that. No, you have all all four weathers, and you don't have any uh, problem with the uh, you know the, you know in uh, Bangalore the air is air quality is not that great, yeah. Yeah. so people suffer from uh, a lot of allergies. In Kanpur, yeah. there is yeah. Kanpur, there is no concept of allergy. He was there, I uh, see, for some time, right? Yeah, 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 we have been here now. <laughs> I'm here for almost now nine years, more than nine years, nine and a half years actually. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I was asking, how did you know Devinder? He was uh, working with Satyam Swas, to my knowledge. Who? Devinder, yeah, Devinder was working with uh, Satyam Swas, so I got to know him from there, and then I visited Patna, IIT Patna. So I met him, uh, I, actually, I met him a couple of times, and then we just. Uh, Talk with each other. It's okay. nice to. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a really very enthusiastic person and uh, yeah. very keen to We yeah. were in uh, we were in constant touch when I was in the US, but after coming here, we have only talked like uh, maybe three four times, but not more than that. It's actually yeah, yeah. a reminder. I will call him up today or tomorrow. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as it happens, you know, you just get, uh, as I think, uh, talking to somebody three, four times in a year is actually quite a lot <laughs> in some times. <laughs> yeah. Actually, conferences used to be a good way to get in touch with people, meeting face to face. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, you know, you, you know, just calling, okay, hey, I should call somebody, it has been a long time, with no reason, uh, no, no excuse. Yes. That's that's why I said that if you can talk to somebody for two three times a year, that's that's. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to see you after a really long time. Yeah, actually, it's nice to uh, it's nice to talk to uh, you know. It's nice that we have this uh, seminar and. Uh, you, you invited yeah. me to give a talk. I was really hoping that I can do this for several, several years actually to talk to people in Kanpur. It just didn't happen long, but now it's good. So I I didn't realize my video was not open. Um, we were actually discussing about this point that, uh, you know, we should be approaching alumni of IIT Kanpur and there should be a constant interaction. So this is a more about a research uh, discussion, but maybe on another occasion, we would also love you to, you know, just informally talk with students and share your experience. 
So sure. students will be more with their alumni than their current professors for the reason that they, they, they do not think ever that they will become us. But if they're, you know, two years seniors talk with them, <laughs> then they see it in a different way. And they also see that, like, if I will say something, they will think, okay, this is professor, he wants us to go into research. But if somebody else says, we do not have any conflict of interest, that will be nicer. Sure, <laughs> there is a conflict of interest. Even I talk to them, but sure, I I will be very happy. If it's, as a matter of fact, uh, it's, it's it will be good to uh, you know uh, associated with uh, Kanpur in some way or other way. I I, I I really hope to do that. Okay, I will yes. ensure that uh, we do something. Sure, about it. I, I look forward to it. Sure, yeah. Yes, I think uh, we can start. Uh, Monit Muntala, you please take uh, over from here. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, good afternoon, everyone. I am Monit Muntala Bhattacharya. On behalf of Material Science uh, and Engineering Society, MSE, uh, IIT Kanpur, and IIM KC, I'd like to welcome the speaker and all the uh, participants all the people who are attending this seminar here. So today, uh, Prof Dr. Praveen Kumar is going to give us a talk on electric current induced failure of pre cat thin metallic structures from experimental observations to applications. I'd like to uh, request Dr. Shikhar Kumar Jha to please introduce the speaker. Over to you, Thank sir. You. Thank you, Moni. Um, um, I am talking with uh, Praveen after a really long time, and as some of you may have heard talking uh, together. So it has a long association, although Praveen may not remember this. Um, I had contacted him when he was coming back from US and joining ISD Bangalore as a professor, and I was planning to go out to US to do my PhD. So there has been a long time since then. Uh, let, me, uh, let me introduce uh, the speaker for today. So Dr. Praveen Kumar received his Bachelor's of Technology from Mechanical Engineering of um, IIT Kanpur. So he is our alumni. He did that in 2003, and then he followed up with an MS and a PhD degree from the Mechanical Engineering in the University of South California and Los Angeles in 2005 and 2007. Uh, so you will notice that uh, his degrees came really fast. In two years master, and another two years of PhD, something that we all should uh, strive to get done faster. And uh, hopefully, uh, he will also be sharing some tips with you today. Currently, uh, as I mentioned, he is an associate professor in Department of Material Science, ISC Bangalore. And his main research interests are mechanical behavior of material with particular emphasis on studying effects of electric current, temperature, sample length, and constructive uses of electromigration, both in solid and liquid materials. Um, I personally um, am I very uh, everyone is uh, requested to keep their videos of uh, themselves muted because there's some noises coming. Thank you. Um, Dr. Kumar, uh, it's over to you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sikhar and uh, Moni, for the nice introduction and moreover the invitation to give this talk. Uh, it's really, you know, I have been finding or I've been looking for ways by which I can interact with, uh, with IIT Kanpur, my alma mater, and somehow it just ha hadn't happened. And partly, of course, I am responsible. I'm actually, not partly, I'm fully responsible for it. And I look forward that with this, I can uh, talk to you as both the students as well as faculty members there more often in future. I, I really, uh, you know, I have... I mean, you know, IIT Kanpur is my alma mater, and, and, and of course, uh, nothing matters in terms of institutions more than your, you know, alma mater where you did your uh, bachelor's. So I'm very, very happy. I'm absolutely thrilled to, you know, talk to you about some of the works that we have been doing. And, and of course, uh, I would like to share uh, of my experience with you if you have anything uh, to ask for. So, any, so today uh, I will talk about uh, our work that we have been doing actually uh, for last six, seven years. And uh, this is related to, uh, you know, a fracture or failure of uh, thin metallic foils upon passing electric current. And now as we will discuss 
uh, through this talk in another 40, 45 minutes. We will see what can we do, how can we understand it. Uh, and even though the understanding is not completely, you know, fully mature, uh, we can still uh, gain, uh, we can still understand it fairly well, and we can actually try to use it for some applications, and especially the applications that I will talk about today will be machining. How can we do some machining of thin foils using this technique? So, of course, this work, uh, I have got a lot of help, actually, uh, by my collaborators. So, one of the collaborators was Indra Datta, and he's a student, actually, Pei Yu Tan. He was a master's student working with him. They helped us, uh, or we collaborated uh, while developing this machining tool. I will show you some of the, that, the pictures and how does it work towards the end. And uh, Dr. B. Subaradi, he's one of my colleagues uh, here in IAC. He, uh, he belongs to electrical engineering department and he runs this high voltage engineering lab. And they have some fantastic, uh, you know, uh, uh, assembly of fantastic ensemble of, you know, high power sources. And we need those high power sources. So we have been collaborating with each other. Uh, and uh, on this, there are a lot of uh, students here at ISC has been working. Uh, the work that I will talk mostly comes from Deepak Sarma. Deepak was my PhD student. He is now a faculty in uh, JNU in, uh, in Delhi. Uh, so uh, much of the work that I will talk today comes from his PhD thesis. Then Subham, uh, he was my master's student. He is now graduated. He has moved on to advanced materials. Uh, he did some work. Uh, a little bit of that work I will talk today. And now uh, this work has been, you know, the baton has been passed to a new PhD student, Swanam, and he, has, he is now in his third year, and he is now, of course, going to take this thing forward uh, in another, uh, in next few years. So the funding for this project came from CSIR, that was initial funding. Now we have a project, and that is being funded by DST. So that's basically is my acknowledgement. And, and especially it is important because all this work in some sense was done by the students only and it's very important to mention their name uh, here. So uh, so let's let's say let's look at this motivation of this this, this work and this is a very famous picture that that is you know might have many many of you must have seen. Basically what it shows is that you have a, a, an aeroplane and a lightning strikes and we all have, you know, studied the you know the famous uh, Gauss law and other things, which tells you that even though the electric you know the lightning strikes, the charges will stay on you know on the outside and interior and inside we will not be electrocuted. That is perfectly fine. And you know, in any ordinary you know flight that you take, uh, you know it is hit by several lightnings and you all are protected uh, because of this very famous uh, rule that that doesn't allow law that doesn't allow you know the charges to be transferred inside it just stays on the skin but then the question is that when this happens then we also have you know uh, even though the current doesn't enter inside and we are safe but but the current do you know uh, pass through the skin of this this plane or these structures and these can be very high current densities uh, you know let's say of the order of 10 to the power 9 ampere per meter square or even higher Okay, uh, so these can actually generate large amount of electromagnetic force on the structure itself. Uh, okay, and we are interested in knowing what happens, uh, you know, in under these circumstances. So, of course, the first thing is that it will generate large amount of electromagnetic forces. Uh, electric current is also associated with dual heating, so you will have a lot of temperature rise, uh, you know, large temperature rise. And if the temperature field is not uniform, then you can also have a stresses. Uh, that will be generated because of this non-uniform uh, temperature, and hence you will have thermal stresses. So essentially, uh, on the on the structure itself, you will have all of these things acting together, and and this is just one example of lightning strike. And the same kind of thing, same kind of uh, thing, uh, same kind of stimuli is also available in microelectronics packages. There, you are talking about the thin films interconnects. Even though the current is not very high, but the current density can be very high because we are talking about very very thin films. Uh, you have high voltage, high voltage supply, power supplies, rail guns, uh, you know, superconducting magnets, nuclear fusion reactors like uh, Tokamak, where you have, you know, large magnetic field, electric field, all of these things interacting with each other. So, so essentially, our uh, idea was that, uh, you know, in this, in these cases, when we have this surge of electric current uh, through a structure, uh, does it have any role to play 
you know, with, with on on the failure, on the on the on the on the structural reliability or integrity of these these, these structures. That's really is the is a question to answer. And of course, uh, this is one part is just electric current, but you can also have mechanical stresses that is being applied there. Uh, because they are actually some load carrying components and so so basically that's that's really is then then it becomes a a problem where we are dealing with multiple stimuli we have an electric current that is being passed we have also magnetic uh, we also have a mechanical load that can be applied in nuclear fusion reactors you can also have an external magnetic field so essentially we are talking about you know how does these different stimuli work together to 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 affect the structural integrity or some sort of a failure of this of these systems. So this is an example of a thin film, actually this thin film copper that we observed in our uh, again completely serendipity. We were not intending that we will have any flaw in the structure or flaw in this film, but we ended up having a flaw. And when we were passing the electric current, actually you can see that the flaw actually kind of propagated. So 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 we have uh, you know possibly we have a reason to believe that this thing can 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 fail, and we want to understand. Uh, what? How can we understand it? And if there is any possibility of, of course, uh, minimizing it, minimizing such kind of uh, problems, and and again trying to use it for some constructive uh, purposes. So, so that's basically is the is the, is the idea here. Now, let me uh, just uh, you know give you a small uh, you know <laughs> small you know, uh, revision for your class 11th and 12th uh, physics. Uh, we all, uh, uh, you know, this is a very simple problem that on which I am working. There's not much, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's not nothing much actually uh, there to understand fundamentally in, in some sense. So if you look at uh, this, you know, you have all have solved the problems. What happens when I have two parallel conductors carrying current, am I right? And when they have, op, you know, when the currents are passing, you know, in opposite direction, then we know that they will repel when they are passing the same current and they will attract. All that uh, thing is very well understood. Uh, and now what we what we thought of looking at is in this problem, then instead of having the two parallel plates or two parallel wires uh, carrying, carrying the current, what happens if I have a film or a structure which has a flaw in it, right? So let's say that this is a flaw. So because you have a flaw, this flaw can be a crack. This can flaw can also be some sort of an inclusion a non-conducting inclusion. And if that is the case, then the current, of course, cannot pass through it. It has to pass around it, right? That's what we are seeing in this picture. So for example, let's say that this is my structure, which has an edge crack, right? And in through this, now I'm going to pass this current between these two points, right? Uh, and then the current has to traverse, it has to go around the crack. And as it goes around the crack, you can see that the current path, essentially uh, the current lines, uh, are actually opposite in direction across this crack, right? So this is a case similar to uh, two conductors uh, carrying current in the opposite direction, and hence they will they will repel each other. So essentially, now I have a situation where uh, the forces are acting on this crack face, trying to open it up almost in 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 mode one. And the same, and this is one thing that will happen. That means I have a flaw, and it will try to open up the flaw, and hence if there's a if there's a crack, that crack can actually grow because of this applied uh, applied uh, force, applied stress in, in some sense. Then also the other thing that will happen is that there will be current crowding at the tip because current is changing its direction. And wherever the current, if you think in terms of the vector, then wherever there's a change in the vector, there will be a lot of current crowding. So there is a current crowding here and current crowding leads to excessive joule heating there. And this, this temperature can be very, very high. Um, right? So we are dealing with a problem where on the tip, which has to grow, or not grow is at a high elevated temperatures, and I'm also trying to open up the open up the crack. And this is one configuration where I have passed the current in between the you know just across the edge crack. You can think in terms of another configuration where the current is passing in, in there also. Here also you will see that we will have the same situation, but of course compared to these two situations here, the current crowding as well as the you know the reversal of the current path will be limited. And hence, uh, if I want to do, I want to understand this behavior, most probably this is a better, better configuration because this will have everything, you know, intensified, everything uh, exaggerated. <clears throat> so in the, in, in, in the rest of the work that I will talk about today, we have sample configuration in this, in this, in this, in this way. Now, <clears throat> this is a very interesting <clears throat> video 
<coughs> that that you know that was taken that was done by professor uh, ravi chandar's group in austin and what they are doing is uh, they have a crack and they are passing current through it and you can see that what is happening at the tip so excessive uh, just one second so excessive <clears throat> excessive uh, current crowding happens and that current crowding i will just run this video again uh, so they are passing a pulse and because of the pulse they are passing and uh, there is excessive joule heating at the tip and so much joule heating is happening at the tip that the whole material melts and it melts and then now you also have an electromagnetic force which is trying to push it out the liquid the molten part and that's what you are seeing here is flying all over the place so the electromagnetic force is is pushing the the you know the liquid the molten material out okay and this this you can do this experiments uh, you know repetitively and as you do this experiment pulse after pulse you can see that you know you will have this series of this blow holes is what we call it as because it looks like a a hole that is being blown up okay so these are called blow, blow holes formed because of the you know because of the applied electromagnetic force on the liquid liquid liquefied material and you can see you can create this kind of patterns am i right uh, and and this is this phenomena in general is called magnetic saw effect because it is sawing am i right but it is this sawing is happening because of the magnetic force and hence this is called electromagnetic saw effects so so the basic idea here is 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 all fine but what we we thought that this is too much of heating too much of melting going on and if i wish to see some sort of a nice you know old fashioned you know fracture uh where i can see the sharp crack propagating then most probably this is this is something that i must avoid in some sense i must avoid excessive joule heating at the tip i must avoid you know melting of the material if i ever want to, to look at uh, you know clean fracture you know classical fracture that means we 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 need to understand how does the current uh, acts to to apply the force acts to heat the tip and then we work in a uh, in a in a regime where i have like large enough electromagnetic force but not enough not a lot of uh, joule heating at the tip and then we can expect we can think of having a fracture okay so if i if i just summarize of whatever we have seen in that last image or whatever we have discussed so far so we can see this as a chronological order so first we pass the electric current as soon as we pass the electric current the electromagnetic force will be induced almost instantaneously crack will be opening in mode 1 because the forces are acting on the face then with time of course uh, you know the joule heating will will keep on happening actually right from the beginning but the joule heating will keep on increasing as you pass the current for longer and longer time there will be more heat that will be you know is j, j square i and t is also time is also there then the eventually the temperature will be high enough that the crack tip will melt and then the molten material will be blown away from the electromagnetic force so in this one the idea is that these three things are instantaneous and this thing is actually time dependent and increases with time so if i want to have fracture then i have to essentially look at only this thing and i have to you know try to you know finish the fracture before these things start to become important okay so so the idea is that that's what we are going to look for and if if we do ever get this fracture this clean fracture then can we define can we how can we understand this fracture or fracture mechanics part of it can we think of some terms like a stress intensity factor that we often have for the classical fracture that are happening under the applied mechanical load so that's that's basically is the idea here so if if i look at the problem itself the problem is actually uh, you know it, it's it's in some sense i we understand the physics of it it's it's generated because of the stress is generated because of electromagnetic force now if i want to understand how does this electromagnetic forces are generated then essentially i have to go back to the this classical maxwell equation which relates the current with magnetic field and then you know you are aware of the boyd's sword law which relates you know you can get the magnetic uh, uh, magnetic field with the current and 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 so on and so forth so essentially we have to solve these basic uh, maxwell equations uh, these are the four equations and then i have to solve this uh, this is my equation of equilibrium uh in this particular problem that whatever we have solved we have neglected this 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 dynamic term okay or the inertial term we are just solving this 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 basic uh the problem but but these are the equations there is there that we have to solve 
these equations that the way we have written, they are all uh, not in the steady state, they are transient for the reason that we will be passing a pulse, an electric current pulse. So that is actually happening over only a short period of time. So I cannot really assume it to be a steady state. And some of those things we will see that what happens uh, because of this transient effects as I show you some of the results. These are the constitutive equations. These are the fairly basic constitutive equations relating to your electric field and current uh, density and magnetic field and magnetic flux. And these are the boundary conditions. Essentially, we are saying that everything, the magnetic field and the magnetic flux remains, you know, uh, continuous and, and, and no current is leaking out of the system. So that means all the current stays inside the system. We solve this uh, problem, this, uh, you know, problem using, you know, console, which allows us to do, uh, you know, this kind of multi-physics problem. Uh, and, and here actually we have to solve these three systems. So we are passing electric current that produces a magnetic field and hence the force. And then that force feeds into the solid mechanics module, which then gives me stresses and, and so on. Uh, in, this, uh, in this one, we have, of course, used a transient solver because everything is dependent on time. And we have made an assumption of linear elasticity. Now, it is reasonable. I, it, I, I will show you some results. It looks, it looks fairly uh, reasonable because in terms of the predictions and in terms of the observations are fairly close. But we all know, and we should keep in mind that we are looking at increasing the temperature and hence plasticity will become important. It's just a question of how much plasticity is there and can we reasonably neglect it or can we reasonably say that, you know, uh, we, we don't bother too much uh, uh, for timing. And, and our idea is that, as you, as you will show, that we did a lot of experiments with only 50 microseconds, you know, pulse width uh, thing, pulse width pulses, where most probably uh, materials may be assumed to remain fairly elastic. So it is, it is debatable. Uh, I, I agree with that. But perhaps this assumption is not so, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's not like a, you know, it's not, uh, it's not so uh, bad. It's, it's a fairly reasonable assumption. And, and we in this model, uh, when we were solving it, we actually passed the current uh, exactly the same that we were, that we were doing in the experiment. So, so we could model uh, exactly the same configuration that we had. In this one, we made this simple uh, geometry. As you can see, this is exactly the same as our, uh, you know, test condition. So all the boundary conditions that you see here, these were all fixed in our experiments, and that's what we will do. That's what we did in in the FEM also. These are the electric current, you know, uh, conditions. So we are passing a pulse here, and this whole reason is actually uh, is, is is grounded. And we did all basic stuff where we looked at the mass mass refinements, and and we thought that we have a fairly good you know hold of what mass sizes we should use. That will give us reasonable result, as you can see here. Beyond a certain point, uh, your your results. In terms of here, we are measuring the peak current at the crack tip or the notch tip is not really you know changing much. That means we are now in a regime where the results will not be affected by the mess size. So these are all good. Now let's see some of the results that what we can see here, and this is how what happens when we are passing the current. And we, remember, we have just done the pulse. So as soon as we pass the pulse. You can see that we are applying a current density which is very large, but at the same time, you will also generate an induced electric current inside that is called eddy currents in, in, a, in, a, in a colloquial way, we call it as an eddy current. That eddy current is generated in response because I am having a fast change in the magnetic field. Now, as soon as magnetic field is changed, we know from the, from the, from the Maxwell equation that will generate an EMF or electric, uh, in electric field and hence it will induce an electric current in its own. And as a, as a matter of fact, if you see the, these arrows, of course, the induced current, that is the eddy current, is in opposite direction as of the applied current. And look at their sizes, you know, the arrow sizes. They are almost comparable. And this is about 10 nanoseconds after I have passed electric current. Essentially, what it means is that the effective current passing through my structure will be almost zero. So it doesn't, the effective current that is passing through my material, which will eventually give me the electromagnetic force, doesn't become, you know, the same as of the applied. Instantaneously, it takes some time. And so after, you know, let's say that we have waited for about six milliseconds, we reach something called a steady state where the induced current becomes almost more or less zero. And this is something that you can see as an electric field lines, which is exactly same vectorially, you know, they are in the same direction as of the J uh, uh, of the current density. And you can see that they actually very nicely, they transverse, they are opposite in the direction, that means they will repel here. And this is, you know, again, the current density in a normalized fashion. 
and you can see there is a large current you know crowding at the crack tip so this all is reasonable in some sense that is what we expected and this is what is happening so the basic idea is there is a reversal of electric current at the around the crack around the notch around the crack and there is a crowding uh, at the at the tip so this is this is all expected again we can look at the magnetic field how does the magnetic field evolve and this is at the 10 nanosecond where i showed you that the applied electric current and the eddy current are more or less the same okay and hence the effective current passing through your material is almost zero there is no current passing through it and hence you can see that there is not much magnetic field here at all but as you wait, wait longer like this is 50 microsecond you can start to see that the magnetic field is starting to build up and of course you wait long enough then the magnetic field is fully developed and the beautiful thing about here is to notice that the magnetic field across the crack tube, across the crack phase, crack faces are actually in the same direction. That means they will repel, right? They are like poles. They will repel each other. And that is again consistent with what we expected. And we can see here when we draw the electromagnetic force lines, you know, they are, you know, they are trying to pull, you know, trying to open the crack in, in almost like mode one. Of course, it's not exactly mode one, but because there is a little bit of you know they are not perfectly perpendicular but it is fairly perpendicular and we will we will treat it as a mode one uh, problem and then we know the forces then we can go ahead we can solve the equilibrium, of equilibrium and you can get the stresses and again as you see as you wait long enough the stresses actually goes you can look at these numbers this is about 10 to the power 4 and here it becomes 10 to the power 8 so the stresses continue to increase these are tensile in nature that means they will like to open up the crack and hence lead to the fracture this these are all evolving with time that's why transient is very very important okay the the uh, transient is, analysis is very important and when we look at this stress field this is again at the steady state that's the picture that i want to show you here because it's, it can be very clearly seen you can see the classic you know the kidney bean shape of the stress uh, ahead of the notch this is something that we expect in the crack and this is exactly what we are seeing when crack when we are applying a mechanical load this is something similar what we are seeing even when we are applying the electric field okay and if i plot these different stresses uh, you know along the along the you know ahead of the crack tip we can see the cracks the stresses decrease very rapidly am i right and if i try to see you know up to about 25% ahead of the crack crack length actually the fit is fairly like you know uh, minus half and that means you know the stresses at the crack tip is they look kidney bean, they look like kidney bean, that's what we expect in the, in the presence of a crack when I'm applying a mechanical load. They also show up to a reasonable distance ahead of the crack tip, which is about 25% length of the crack itself, which is a fairly large length. The, we are seeing, you know, R to the power minus 0.5 kind of similarity that would be seen. So the variation in the stress is, uh, you know, one by R, the distance to the power half, which is what we also see in the classic crack and hence, we, we propose uh, that we can do, we should be able to do a meaningful analysis by, for, from the calculation of the stress intensity factor. For calculating the stress intensity factor, we, we need some of these, you know, for a classic crack, we can do a stress intensity factor analysis because we have, you know, uh, this kind of a stress distribution ahead of the crack tip. So that's, that's what we attempt to do. To calculate the stress intensity, we, we went ahead with this, uh, contour integral approach. We calculated the, uh, you know, J integral. This can, uh, what important thing that you have to keep in mind here is that your electromagnetic force is a body force. It's not a, it's not like a, you know, far field stress or attraction on the, up, acting on the, on the face of the crack. Actually, it is acting at each and every point in the body. And hence it is a body force. And that's because of that, we have to modify, not modify this. This is all well known. But often when you look at the J integral uh, analysis, you often look at what means in most of the textbook, you will see only this part of the equation and not this one, which is a body force because often we assume body force to be zero. So, so but these are these analysis have been already done and we just found the right equation that we have to use. And when we use this right equation, then essentially we match, we, we make the J integral independent of the, of the, of the path. If you don't do that, then the J integral will not remain independent of the path, and hence we will get wrong results. You know, then we can again, as I said, we are assuming linear elastic fracture mechanics here. From there, uh, this is a thin foil. We can assume planar stress, and there I can calculate the stress intensity factor, and then I can see how does this stress intensity factor increases with time, and you can see that. 
at a very small time when when the current has not been stabilized or current is still increasing the stress intensity factor is also low and then maybe around 6 6 milliseconds or so that it becomes close to the steady state this is a steady state number uh, and and it reaches and gradually it reaches there of course it asymptotically reaches asymptotically you know approach it and now let's take an example what why this is important this is important because let's say that i am taking a, a material which is let's say aluminum foil that is the material of my choice for these experiments that i will show you in a few minutes the the when we measured the stress intensity for critical stress intensity factor k1c for that aluminum foil we found about which is close to be about 8.6 megapascal square meter uh, sorry square root meter so that is here right that is this line that means for the first you know, about 4.5 milliseconds, am I right? The stress intensity factor is actually smaller. The applied stress intensity factor is smaller than this critical number. Hence, here, I will not have any fracture. And as a matter of fact, I will have fracture only here on the right-hand side, am I right? Of course, this is for this given current density. So that means what is happening here is that, let's say that I pass an electric current pulse of only about, let's say, 5 milliseconds, then I will have fracture only about only 0.5 milliseconds time. I'm right, and in that time, I will grow the crack only by, you know, a small fraction. I will not have the catastrophic failure going from one end to another end because my after my five milliseconds, let's say my my pulse goes down. Okay, that means my driving force will also, you know, go down, and hence the crack will not no longer propagate. So, so it allows us to propagate the crack only during the partial part of the of the pulse. And it doesn't allow it to grow, you know, in, 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 in principle, it doesn't allow it to grow, you know, catastrophically, it will grow only by a certain amount each pulse, each pulse, which is good, which is, which is something that can be quite useful. Then just for the sake of, you know, building some intuition, we looked at how does this K changes by, by with, with different parameters, the parameters of J, crack length, length of the sample, and the magnetic permeability. And from there, this is done all in FEM parametric study. We got a equation. Of course, this is an equation that is for valid for, I mean, it's actually valid for all the conditions, but this was derived only for the steady state. These numbers will change as we change the, whether we are in steady state or not in the steady state. Uh, what we saw is that the, the stress intensity factor was proportional to J and you know, proportional to the square root of A. If you look at this equation, this clearly reminds that of, of, the, of the classic case when I'm applying a far field, you know, mechanical stress. There essentially I see a stress intensity factor equal to proportional to sigma square root of uh, A. So this looks like exactly the same. All I have done in some sense is to replace sigma by this J square term. Okay, but anyway, it doesn't matter whether it's a transient or a steady state. I should be able to, using FEM, I should be able to calculate the stress intensity factor for a given experimental condition. So we did experiments, and this is the setup that we had. As you can see, this is all custom-made setup. We had a sample holder, so this is where we kept the sample. And this is the dead weight that we are applying, okay? And uh, this is the load cell, so that measure the load. This one, we can fill it with liquid nitrogen because we wanted to do some experiments where the plasticity that is coming because of the excessive heating of the tip can be minimized. So we did a lot of experiments under the liquid nitrogen con condition. And these are the electrical connections we had an optical microscope so that we can measure the crack growing. How does the crack grows? This is our sample. It's just a plain, you know, aluminum foil. We could make a crack or make a notch by just, you know, just by moving the, you know, the razor blade. This is the whole setup, actually, what Deepak made. Uh, and it is, you know, the end, everything is here. We had an oscilloscope so that we can exactly measure what is the current that is passing through the sample. That can be then fed into our FEM calculations so that we can know what kind of stresses that is being generated. So this is the setup that we had. These are the pulses that we could pass, okay? These are, this is about, you know, this can go from 0.5 to 5 milliseconds. This can, is a very short pulse, it's about only 50 microseconds, but can go, can give us about five kilo amperes or so in terms of the current density currents that can be passed. These are very high currents actually in some sense. So we did these experiments. With, this was in liquid nitrogen, and you can see here that the crack has actually grown from this was our original notch, and you can see a faint line going here, which is much more readily available after 200 pulses. And of course, look at this, these are different magnifications. So this has grown much longer, 
after 200 pulses and when we measure the you know the 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 stress intensity factor then essentially we see that it is actually more than greater than you know what we have uh, for this foil is critical stress intensity factor so we expected the crack to grow and it did grow and when we were doing the experiments at a lower current density where this k you know uh, k1 ed was less than this number the crack actually didn't grow at all so so this actually gives you an idea that this is indeed is a fracture kind of uh, deal where the crack will grow only when whatever i'm applying the the stress intensity factor has to be greater than the critical stress intensity factor and same experiments we can do at a, you know at a higher current density and what we see here is that the cracks actually grow even longer even longer because uh, they are growing longer per pulse longer to a longer distance per pulse which is kind of nice and uh, you know this is something that again i can use later on when i am trying to develop my uh, my you know my 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 machining uh, tools i can do the same experiments with a lower pulse width right and you can see that here also the crack grows in a little sharper fashion and here actually per pulse the crack grows very very short very very small and i also need much larger current densities to pass okay so for example here the current densities are of the order of this am i right and i just show you the image here these are actually smaller currents okay so i need larger currents and and every pulse the current pass current grow, you know crack grows by a shorter amount that's why i have to go you know even with after 100 you know 200 pulses the crack has not grown as big as it was growing uh, when i was passing longer pulse uh, or wider pulse pulses okay now we did the experiments in air also and you can see that the crack actually propagates really fast here in some sense i don't even these are 500 microns i don't even have to use the uh, you know the my sem i can just look at it from the optical microscope itself to see the crack growth and what i also see is that there is a you know some sort of a wrinkling around the crack where it grows and it gives you a sense of some sort of a heat affected zone so there is a there is a you know heat affected zone when i am doing these experiments in air now why i wanted to do this thing in air because if i think of developing some machining tool then it's much better to use do it in air rather than liquid nitrogen environment but in air i get faster crack growth that is true i get faster crack growth even at lower current density but then there is a heat affected zone because the whole thing just gets heated up really really high so it has to be reduced when i am you know doing uh, for machining application now this is uh, i i just take a pause here to understand that earlier we were seeing these blow holes now where do we did that they go why do we have here you know this nice uh, you know fracture so actually what we did was we did this experiment it, this is in air and what we found that as you keep passing the pulses eventually you start to see this 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 uh, you know blow holes that means after certain current after after the crack has grown by certain amount or if you do these experiments at higher current density then again actually you start to see these blow holes right from the beginning itself okay and they you know if you look at these images and look at these images they look identical or look they look similar what it means is that these people in in uh, you know by professor you know k ravichandra's group all that they were doing is that they were doing their experiments at very high current density so if you if you don't go to that high current density actually you can avoid blow hole formation altogether and what you will see is just clean clean you know nice fracture so so that so how do you get blow holes you get blow holes if your crack length is longer or if your current densities are higher and this this is what you see at the edges these are like very large you know uh, heat zone uh, heat zone affected region we try to understand this heat affected region and we see that if i want to this this expanse of this heat affected zone is actually proportional to j square okay now j square is also proportional to k1c am i right so if i want to uh, reduce the j j to reduce my heat affected zone my driving force will also reduce so in some sense this give you a clue that maybe it's time to actually especially because i don't like heat affected zone because i i want to use it for machining and hence i must reduce the j but if i reduce the j the k will also reduce so how can, how can i compensate for that reduction in k or k uh, stress intensity factor and one way is to compensate for is to apply an additional stimulus for example mechanical load magnetic field and so on and so forth so here we did what the mechanical load and we did this simulations where we just pass electric current 
only mechanical load and combined mechanical and electrical load load and what we see is that essentially i can linearly superimpose the effect of these two conditions when i am calculating the stress intensity factor this is very good because they are linearly superimposable nothing is more you know easier to understand than than something that i can linearly add then we did these experiments and i will show you this video uh sorry uh where you can actually see that uh you know this is a video that we recorded when we are applying a mechanical load and we are passing electric current and actually you can see that the crack actually grows every time you see a blink that is one pulse has been passed okay so this is actually in some sense uh a, a process and and you can see that the crack actually grows like that okay so this is very good so i can see that now even i am doing an experiments here uh by the way when i apply the mechanical load the material doesn't fracture it just stays as it is because the the stress intensity factor because of the applied load is smaller than the critical stress intensity factor then i just pass the pulse or electric current pulse which will just make it high enough to 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 you know cross this k1c and you can see here the crack has propagated and if i look at the surfaces they are look very clean i don't have much of the heat affected zone there okay so critical current density jc that i need decreases because i am supplementing uh, my need for a stress intensity factor from the mechanical load and that reduces the heat affected zone and also we don't have any blow holes at all we did this we looked at this thing a little bit clearly like systematically uh, and you can see from this picture this is experimental and this is fem data as i apply as i increase the stress uh, on the sample the critical current density that is needed decreases required to fracture and same thing happens if i increase the crack length so basically this is fairly fairly nice we can understand that why it is happening and then just to just to summarize whatever we have discussed so far so that we can talk about applications what we see is that the crack can grow if i pass electric current as long as my stress intensity factor is higher than the critical stress intensity factor crack propagates by finite amount of time or pulse it increases with current density it you know it is shorter for as you know shorter pulse pulses and it can also increase by ambient temperature blow holes uh, can be avoided if i do the experiment at lower current density and shorter crack length and require current density and hence heat affected zone decrease with applied mechanical load now we come to this question towards the application now if i want to develop something which is related to machining then i should be able to not only go in a straight path if i have a flaw i should be able to rotate the flaw i should be able to make any pattern that i like to make that pattern i should be able to deflect the crack you know in in any along any direction and of course i can control how much the crack propagate per pulse by by playing with my j my current density and and the pulse width okay so the question is can i deflect the crack because that gives me an idea about making a curve kind of a cut the second question is that if we can then can we build a setup uh, for this machining and the final question is that one of the thing that people have to ask always how do i select this cutting parameters to get you know a job done with my satisfaction so i will quickly try to answer these three questions in next few slides and and i hope that i have little bit of time that i can i can i can do that so we go back to this question of can i deflect the crack and one way we thought that how can i deflect the crack is by let's say perhaps applying a a, a a you know mechanical load at an angle to initial notch and so here we do did the experiment where we applied you know the mechanical load at a 45 degree angle with respect to the respect to the crack face and this is what we see you see we apply a stress in this direction the crack has deflected in that direction this is beautiful and of course the things are clean what it tells you that and then of course i continue this pulses then it just continues in this direction and this is this is you know this is very uh, interesting actually you can do a very simple experiment where you you know you tear your paper you know a paper uh, make a crack there and try to pull it at an angle and you will see that the crack that in the paper that you have will deflect almost perpendicular to the to the to the direction in which you are applying the force so this is exactly what we are seeing here okay so the crack deflects if i change the angle at which the load is being applied so this is good and then can we understand the angle at which it will deflect 
and yes we can because actually as a matter of fact this is this is this is a straight out from the from a from a book that was written by uh, professor prasant kumar i think maybe most probably many of you may not know him he used to teach us fractional mechanics when when i was a student uh, in in iit kanpur so he wrote a very nice book on fractional mechanics this these equations are taken from his book only and 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 actually what these equations allows you to do is to calculate the angle at which this theta this this uh, this this crack will deflect and and if we measure this angle at which these equations by the way these all these equations are linear elastic fracture mechanics uh, and these equations gives you uh, some sense of at what angle the cracks will deflect for a given loading condition of electromagnetic loading condition we have added just the electric part in it and the observations what you have and whatever prediction that you have they are fairly close to each other like here at this angle they are about within 2 degrees of 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 deviation and we did lot of experiments at different thetas and you can see that they always remain very close to 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 our predictions uh, and interestingly the load at which uh, the angle at which i apply the load and the angle at which this crack deflects actually also are fairly close to each other so so that uh, you know you don't have to do all this complicated uh, mathematics you can just get a sense of at what angle you should apply the mechanical load so we can in some sense we can uh, deflect the crack and hence the cut at any preset angle because all i need to do is to change the angle theta and that's that's all about it and we did this some of these things where we were manually controlling the stage and you can see this is a cut that we made at two different angles so we changed the angles and we got this thing this was a little bit you know in the beginning when we were trying to play with these things i can make again the can keep deflecting the crack this is by the way these are in the thin films these are very thin films in which we are making these cuts they are not of great quality but this were our initial results where everything was manually controlled okay uh, what you remember that we can grow the crack uh by you know 1 micrometer in per, per pulse so i have that much of control about its length which is which is fantastic and of course this this these samples less than 10 you know 10 micrometers and less than 10 micrometers we can again still cut it okay these are some other uh, samples this is a 5 mm thick high steel plate and you can see that we can still cut make a cut this is 20 micrometer thick uh, lead foil and again you can see that we can we can rotate that cut as by as you change the change the loading direction of course these results were all manually done and that's where uh, you know we 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 collaborated with professor inna datta in washington state and he's a student uh, uh, uh pay you and 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 this is the setup that we got made okay which is actually your automatic uh, cutter automatic cutter so it has a way to apply the load which is we are applying by some a uh, linear actuator we can rotate uh the 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 job the sample with using this you know there is a you cannot see in this view but we have a motor at the bottom and and that actually rotates sorry not the sample but it rotates the the mechanical load at which the the mechanical loading assembly by a certain angle so i will show you this video and you can see how does this operate and this is uh this is uh you know this is this is the video that you can see this is a short video of about 30 seconds of course this is a uh, the work that was done for long uh, it took longer time but i have you know compressed this video for 30 seconds and you can see that the crack is growing i'm right as i'm passing the pulses now here is where i rotated the loading angle okay so i have still not applied the load okay the load will be applied only after 7 second but seventh pulse but when i apply the load and now you will see that the crack has deflected see that so now this is all automatic i just have to press some buttons and and i can play with the 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 at angle at which we are we can apply the load this is just different pictures and you can see that when i apply the load the crack do deflect at an angle now of course this is a work in progress this is the first set of images that we have and we have to now again you know any technology development uh is 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 a painstaking job where you know you spend weeks actually to get a little bit of tangible development but but this is a good start we have got something which is automatic am i right and you can now uh, fine tune the parameters you can try to make it you know some sort of a feedback based uh, technique here of course we have also another problem that we cannot rotate the angle 
uh, because of the motor itself that we have, we cannot rotate it by you know less than two degrees. So that is the stepper motor with a step of about two degrees. So there are a lot of scope for here to you know fine tune it, develop it. But but the interesting thing here is that you look at the look at the size of this entire entire thing. This fits into your palm a little bit more than your palm. That's that's all it is. Am um, I right? And then uh, you know you have quite it's quite fascinating to to see this thing in 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 in, in you know in in working. And then the last question that that I had posed that once we have this let's say this tool, then the question comes: How can I select the parameters? Uh, that that is required, and this one we developed one cutting mechanism map, and this cutting mechanism map right now is only for the electric current. That means we haven't applied the mechanical force or other forces. That will that will be the task that we'll be doing later on, and we can you know define a few things, uh, like for example, what was your original crack, you know, width, how much it is growing, how fast it is growing, and based on all that, we can define. You know, one quality factor, which is one minus W1 by W0, that means the ratio of these two, and P, that means what is acceptable, how wide cut you want to have. Larger the P, that means I can live with much wider cut, right? That that actually puts less constraint on 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 my cuts, okay? And 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 this is a quality factor that I define, and then we define the merit factor, which is actually product of this quality factor and the speed at which you can cut. Am right, and these are some of the. Uh, these are actually based on the experimental data that we generated, that we got. So, so the the uh, so the map was generated based on what we observed, and what we see is that you know these are for different uh, likings, like this p equal to two. That means this is this has. I don't want it to be too wide, the the crack path, and this one p equal to five. That means I can live with even the cut is a little bit wider. And you can make these different maps. So here, actually, you can see these are the three different zones: fracture, elongated hole, and blow holes. Am I right? So of course, if you have working at a higher temperatures with higher current density, you have blow holes. If you're working at lower temperatures, like you know liquid nitrogen or anything, at lower current density, you will have fracture, and then everything is between. So with this map and these contours that you see, these are the merit factors. Uh, you can actually then select where essentially you want to. Uh, do the machining. Ideally, you want to do machining with the highest merit factor. Okay, so in this case, this is where the merit factor is. So that means if you loosen your constraint of how wide you can have, uh, you know, the crack propagation, essentially, then you can work at, you know, higher currents and higher temperature as compared to this one, uh, where your constraint is less, then you have to work at, you know, lower temperatures and lower current density. So this gives you, you know, these are just the flavors. This is work in progress. This part of it is work in progress. But this is where we are heading towards. We are heading towards coming up with some sort of a uh, uh, a way to to do some machining of these foils, which are very difficult, by the way, to machine otherwise, to make any sort of set of patterns. Uh, and then with this kind of maps, which are very helpful, you can then, you know, re realize, uh, you know. We can choose the parameters of current density and temperature. Of course, this has to be developed with the stresses and other things also. So, with that, I thank you very much. Uh, and I, I'm sorry I took a little longer than expected, but I, I, you, you, you can ask me questions now. Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, are you ready to take the questions? Yes. Uh, Shikhar, sir, please. Okay. So, uh, first question comes from Monikuntala. She wants to know what is the minimum current density and how do you calculate that? Yeah, that's an interest. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, I, I rushed it through. But basically, if I show you this slide, uh, essentially, uh, what is happening that we can calculate the you know, for any given current density that I have to pass, I can calculate what is my, you know, produce a stress intensity factor in the structure, right? And I can then compare that stress intensity factor with the, uh, you know, with the with the critical stress intensity factor that is actually a materials property. Uh, how do I reach that critical stress intensity factor? That is upon me. I can reach there. By applying a purely mechanical load, that's how we actually calculated that critical stress intensity factor for our material. 
or I can reach there by passing the electric current. Okay, and I can calculate how much you know because you know this 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 thing you know this is a very uh, you know uh, kind of like a rough estimate which we can use to see how my k applied will change with j, and as soon as this this k applied matches with my critical stress intensity factor, I, I can think that the fracture will take place. Now I can do it by purely by current density or I can do it by partially with the current density and partially with the mechanical load. Okay, so uh, the criteria is that my applied stress intensity factor has to be greater than my critical stress intensity factor. Uh, I, is that, does yeah, that so if that, I understand correctly, you are saying it is, you are calculating it at the tip, not at the electrode. No, not at the left. No, no, no. A stress intensity factor has to be calculated near the tip. Yes, near the notch tip. Yes. Um, I had a couple of my own questions as well, which sure. I will ask if, uh, and then maybe some other questions. So my question was, uh, first of all, this is done with aluminum, which is known to be a very good conductor. Have you given any consideration if you depart from something which is so um, easily conducting, going into maybe semiconductor or maybe even ceramics as a higher end? Some induction effect that you could no yeah you're right we haven't no we haven't yet explored uh, uh, anything non-metallic so far and i think that is something that we should do it's actually the there is a there's a of course you know like a lot of uh, like for example there's an obvious application in the in the piezo ceramics right piezo materials where they they are exposed to high you know high uh, you know voltages but the currents are very small, but the voltages are very high, and and perhaps we should see what happens in those in those systems. But we haven't done any experiments uh, in in that line yet. But that is interesting. We should we should explore those. Yeah. And I and I as I understand, uh, you are running this experiment in uh, current controlled way with some uh, yes. pulse current, not voltage control. Like whatever yes. voltage it requires to generate that kind of pulse. Yes, means uh, we, our main target is is the current because essentially the current is the active component here. The voltage is kind of coming as a you know whatever is needed in terms of voltage it just automatically come. Now of course uh, you know there is upper limit of the voltage for a given machine, so we are limited by the power of the machine. But yes, we do experiments uh, in 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 control in current control mode. And assume but, that whatever voltage is required, it will automatically come. Yeah. But I suppose in this experiment, your voltage requirement will be quite minimal, given that it is your metallic. Yes, it's metal. It yes. Whatever current capacity your power supply can handle. Yes, you are right. Actually, if if I show you the the systems that we have, you can see here that for thousand amperes, I just need about fifty volts in this in this system. So so the voltage, yes, because we are dealing with metals. Even though they are foils, even though they are about 10 micrometer thick foils, but still the resistance is very low. Okay. Yes. So I have a question from uh, Pranjal Chauhan. He wants to know, does phase transformation can be uh, observed by uh, introducing? Yeah. That, yes. That yes. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting question and uh, interesting question. And, and I, I think it is going to be uh, true for uh, you know, of course, for we are dealing with pure metals and you know simple systems where there is no no phase to transform to other than becoming liquid. But there are if if you uh, if you choose a system where a stress can uh, can lead to phase transformation or even temperature can lead to phase transformation, then this will happen. Uh, it is it is uh, it is uh, not uh, not something that should not happen. Uh, we haven't looked at those systems. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's maybe in future we will see what happens, I but it should happen. Steel uh, foil could be a good uh, sample to find yeah. out. Um, we have another question from Professor A.K. Singh. Um, are the computations uh, sensitive to time steps that we choose? Do we have a two-way coupling in this case? So, sorry, once, uh, I, I, can you repeat the question? Uh, that you are running is it sensitive to the time states that you have chosen? Oh and yes. Do we have a two-way coupling in this case? Okay, so sensitive to time step, uh, we we select very small time step, and of course it is because you know you remember if if you look at those equations itself, uh, the the Maxwell equations, the way we have written, 
they are all actually uh, you know we are interested in derivatives right so if you uh, you know if you take longer time shorter time you know the the the, 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 the there will be a effect on of that on the gradient on the and hence it will affect your reading so what we do is that we try to minimize time step that we have and so that we can get uh, below by reducing the time step even further we don't get any change in the numbers so we do that now this two way coupling i i didn't understand that really actually what, what is two way coupling so if you can explain me i can try to it's not clear to me yeah, i think professor singh can comment right like uh... yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what what i had in mind is that uh, we are passing current and we have a crack that is opening up so what i wanted to know is that the crack is opening up is it going to change the current density around it or oh, yes uh, yes figure sure. out that's one way coupling that means one is not affecting the other if yes. it is a two no, way coupling yes yeah you're right it is it is a coupled problem so as the crack grows I mean, the the current density near the crack tip will actually change. It will evolve. So in that way, it is two-way coupling, and and we have seen the very nice example of that when we look at these blowholes. Uh, let me just uh, see those. Uh, I can show you. And we did analysis also uh, later on. Uh, you see, like this, this is actually the very nice example of the of of this uh, coupling coupled coupling things. Am I right? For example, as the crack length grows here, you see all of a sudden you have a blowhole. and this blow hole forms because the the length of the crack is so large that you have excessive current crowding now at the crack tip and excessive dew lead and that leads to blow hole formation right if if there was no two way coupling then this would have never happened right so we we, we and here also you can see that the size of the blow holes that you are forming and right for a given current density it, current is increasing keeps on increasing because you know your every time your crack becomes longer your intensification dew leading current crowding it should just get intensified so in that yes it is a coupled problem uh, in fem we can uh, we can address this issue because we can make models which are you know with have an incremental increase in the length in the crack so so our model doesn't actually allow the crack to grow it just gives you a static information about what happens at that particular crack length and then we can make another model with a little longer crack length and then you can see what happens there so 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 we don't track the crack growth in our in our models thank you thank you shikhar can i ask a question yes sir uh, sir definitely uh, shikhar okay, sir yeah. is so, muted acha ha pravin hello yeah yeah hi yes, yes pravin very nice work you know I, uh, what i really liked about this work was that you looked at a very fundamental problem and you try to kind of build a setup uh, in your own lab then do computational work then go and build up a prototype and also come up with this cutting map i think this is probably the way forward uh, to you know take our what all nice science that uh, we are doing in our labs uh, to the technological aspect uh, so so that that is one very uh, good point that i really appreciate because i am not able to do that uh, but one question i had that oh, you know, yeah, we are also not able to do the same thing for all the work that we are doing so yeah <laughs> but, but it's it's really a very good uh, step forward right because you know we are trying to build up uh, you know small things in our lab shikhar is also there so shikhar and couple of uh, my co colleagues in the lab and students so they are trying to build up so for us you know having made a fatigue testing machine itself is like a big achievement uh, but but uh, what what i really liked here was that you showed that by just giving this uh, additional uh, electric uh, current pulse we can cause the deflection of the crack and if you can control it uh see we have not really considered the microstructure aspects so what we are trying to do with couple of my students here uh, at uh, iit kanpur is to look at the microstructural aspects of you know uh, crack propagation in terms of uh, different length scales like we are looking at additive manufactured materials so to look at you know uh, different uh, uh, kind of the microstructural length scales that we have and i believe this machining what what you showed us uh the, the the link between the microstructural lens scale and the kind of lens scale that you are talking is 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 going to be much much uh, stronger because you know even when you talk about additive you have to go and do the final machining operation that is always there yeah so so i was just asking a very uh, fundamental question like as if can we 
uh, or do you plan to look at like the microstructural aspect and link yes. it to the, you know your uh, these things like how the crack is propagating and all yes. supply and electric field? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, that is the next thing that uh, we want to do. Uh, yes. With uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, Swanand is uh, is working on this thing. He's a metallurgist, and mm -hmm. he is. Uh, we are looking uh, at those. Uh, that's actually one of the things he has to do before he graduates. Okay, okay, okay. We will look into the, but of course, uh, not in a very complex systems. We uh -huh. will still uh, confine ourselves to, you know, uh, maybe, you know, simple systems with simple phases and like very identifiable right, right. phases. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you have, let's say, a lot of precipitates, then things can change. And if you have, let's say, a nice, well separated two phases, then perhaps things will be a little simpler to look at. So we are interested in looking at, uh, you know, uh, microstructure, including crystallographic texture. And, mm -hmm. and 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 so on so but unfortunately we haven't made progress there so far we have been uh, uh, but that will be something that uh, that that we will be doing in future yes and and mm -hmm. i will be very happy to actually you know also you know uh, get your opinion on that because of course you are very good at uh, you know looking at all sorts of microstructure and what is happening there so we can yeah, that, 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 that's nice of you, Praveen. But this is very interesting work because what I really like, you know, the length scale that you're talking about is, is really good, you know, because if we can do this and kind of come up with uh, an equipment which, uh, you know, I don't know whether, are you competing with EDM? Sorry, once again, EDM? EDM? Are you competing oh, with... Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> no? I, I, we, don't, we are not competing with anything. For example, we haven't filed any patent on this at all. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all in public now and uh, we have published papers and we haven't filed any patent. This is something mm -hmm. that we like to explore. Mm -hmm. And let's see where does it go. You know, uh, Of course, if you are talking about 10 micrometer thick foil, you cannot do EDM. Right, right. right. Uh, so, and uh, this can, you know, because it is working on uh, electromagnetic fracture, essentially you can also work with... Uh, uh, you know, difficult to cut materials, for example. Materials, you know, exactly. Yeah. So uh, there is some um, scope here, of course, to uh, look look at those aspects. Uh, but at, as of now, this is uh, you know uh, something that we want to seriously develop. Uh, but we don't know where. Means you know, <laughs> means I'm not yet good at doing the where the market value is and, and so on. Yeah, so yeah, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't done that. But certainly, but, you know, there is a there is a possibility, and you know, the setup itself is very small. You know. Mm -hmm. To make and work on uh, this will have some niche application. True, true. We have some niche application. Yeah. The the you see the, the kind of uh, you know flexibility in sense of feed rate and the sample size that you have in EDM we cannot mm -hmm. go there. Yeah. Right. So we cannot have a direct competition with EDM. What we can do is that we can perhaps look into some of the you know like. Applications where EDM cannot be applied directly. Applied, right. Right. So that's so this will be kind of not computer. Most probably it will be supplementary to EDM rather than rather than you know, competitor to that. Yeah, but we, uh, we haven't done much of the that kind of thought. Yeah. I um, I'm audible. I had a question about this design. So. Um, like uh, I am very fascinated with designs and how we make things. So looking at this particular design, I'm curious to know why you have made that. Uh, you know, semi. Um, yeah, because you see the you see the 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 load is. You see, uh, there are two things that you have to apply, right? There are two things that you have to do, right? The first thing you have to do is to pass current that requires electrodes. And the second thing is that you have to apply a force, right? Apply a force. Now. The way we have designed this thing is that we want to keep the current where we are passing the current not rotating. So that remains fixed. That means sample remains more or less fixed, right? Now I have to apply a load, right, at an any angle. I'm right. So how can I apply a load? Now a circle gives me an idea that if with a circle I will always apply a load that will always be normal to the uh, to the to the contact surface. I'm right. So if I have, let's say that, now this is where I'm applying the mechanical load. I think you can see those two screws in there, am I right? So now I have to rotate this, am I right? To apply it and force at an angle, right? So first of all, these groups allow me to do this rotation without any problem. And also the circular nature allows me to always apply a load normal, right? So which is a good thing. So that's, this is actually not a, 
you know, not a very uh, new design in some sense. Uh, if you look at the fracture, you know, mixed mode fracture uh, samples, the Arken design, very famous Arken design. It was similar. It's similar. Actually, it, 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 they also come up with this, uh, making this uh, circular groove, and that's how they uh, fix the angle of, of mechanical loading. So, so this is, in some sense, this is just a uh, Arkin uh, kind of, you know, uh, fixture. Has been adopted that's here good. a little bit. That's all. Now I can notice that you had rotated to apply it. Uh, yes, yes, like yes. This is rotated here. I had not noticed it earlier. Thank so, you. So I'm sorry, I had to rush a little bit towards the end. <laughs> okay, very captivating. Um, I welcome if there is any question from faculty or students now. I don't see any in the chat box. Okay, if not, then I will now invite Vinay to um, uh, to convey our thanks to Professor Kumar. Vinay. Thank you, sir. Good evening, all. On behalf of MSES and Indian Institute of Metals Kanpur chapter, I would like to take this up opportunity to propose the vote of thanks to those who have directly or indirectly contributed to the webinar on electric current induced failure of pre cracked in metallic structures. I would like to offer our gratitude to Dr. Praveen Kumar. Sir, we are really enlightened with your knowledge and your presence. We are thankful for Professors Dr. Shikhar Jha, Dr. Sudhanshu Shekhar sir, Dr. Anand Subramaniam sir, Dr. Amrendra Kumar Singh sir, Dr. Lau sir, who made this webinar possible for us. Last but not the least, our heartful thank, thanks for all the students and the faculty members who, for their active participation. With these warm words and kind message, we move on to end this webinar. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Praveen. It was really nice to hear you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm very happy that, that, you know, that you liked it. So thank yeah, you very I, much. And, and we will not stop here. Uh, we will send some of our students for internship to you. Please, so please. Myself and Shikhar will keep bothering you. Our students also graduate, so they can also go as postdoc for a sure. uh, uh, year or so. You know, I have had a good experience. You know, this person, Sumit, my student who was postdoc with Satyam. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so he, you, you know him probably because uh, I was in touch with you for him. Uh, so this guy is now joining IIT Roorkee in, in a oh. week's time. He'll be there. Sure. So, 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 so he used ISC as a stepping stone. He ended up working with Kaushik and Satyam. And uh, in seven months time, he moved to UK. And okay. then after two years, he's back to India at IIT Roorkee. So, so, we, so this is very we, good. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have some of our students and I, I really like, you know, see what, what I wanted, really, like, you know, we don't make things. Shikhar, tell me, right? Like we just use SEM, TEM, generate something and write here. Yeah, I feel so ashamed, you know. I, I want to make something, you know, something that works. So Shikhar is trying to do some very interesting things. He's building up what Shikhar? This uh, single, single crystal growth uh, thing. And what, what else you are doing? Some furnace for your heat treatment and all, right? What Shikhar got bent? Sir, you are on mute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so actually, uh, as Dr. Kumar has done, I'm also making my own setup. So build my own furnace, build my own controller for the field. That's, that's, very, that's very good. That's very good. No, so I am. I really love doing that. It's fun thing. And since uh, Nilesh, you were pointing it out, just the other day I was talking with Sashank that if we get a student, I had some idea that we could build SEM on our own, and it should be considered as an M Tech project. Uh, you know, uh, we should put our hands into developing technology, not just uh, thinking about science, which is great. But then, technology development should also be hands in hand. So I was just talking with Sashank about this one. That can we think of doing this, like some collaboration maybe with electrical ourselves, and we could build a, a SEM. And people have done it. It is out there in open in YouTube your videos. I could send you a couple of them where people are building it themselves. So why not? It could be a good learning project for them. Right. Uh, so Praveen, I think Professor Singh has left. But you remember I had written a mail to you, right? Like. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So so. Yes. So so once things materialize, uh, we will get in touch with you. But there we would like to hear uh, your creep work uh, in the ICME sure. because because there it's like all these steel industries and defense people. 
so we can so, you can share with them that how the creep uh, the miniature creep testing that you are doing can be used as a kind of rapid uh, testing tool you know or as or as a high throughput experiment uh, sure, for yeah. scanning a lot of materials for creep uh, properties right sure, yeah. uh, so, so thank you very much praveen you know for yeah, thank you. such a short notice <laughs> Thank and you very much for inviting me, Mr. You know, I cannot. No, and we would like to. We would like to have you here. Uh, you know, uh, yes, I really love that. It, it's just been ten yes. years that I have been in IIT Kharpur. It's it's a it's a shame. It's embarrassing for me. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that, let, let's let the Corona thing get over. And, uh, and just before the seminar, like before the person who was bugging me, even before that, I was talking with actually Sumit, our Professor Sumit Basu. Uh, yes, you, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because, so, yeah. So, so, so Sumit is also doing uh, very interesting things, you know. So he has built up all these in situ uh, facilities, the kind of work that you are doing at IISC, right? Uh, to do in situ test in a yes, microscope yes, yeah. in, in a SCM, and he's kind enough to hand it over to you know, like uh, most of us who can go and use it. Uh, so you know, so the, I, I didn't mention, but like he has also been telling me that you know we have to have probably visit us and all. So if you come here, you, there are like at least two departments open for you. So you can do what I'll be very there. happy. Ah, let and, and, and let's just get over and I will be there. Yeah. And, yeah. and one more request I had, Praveen, you know, my some of my students are here, so you can always ask them. So what I do is, uh, you know, whenever they have to prepare for their comprehensive exam, I ask them to go through your slides on mechanical behavior. Uh, so, the, 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 and, and the reason I will tell you, because what ends up happening, wherever they have done their B-Tech, the way mechanical behavior is start is like, you know, they don't even teach uh, chapter number one and two of DTA. So for them, it everything starts from, you know, so they don't even know the tensorial part or like the force balance and all, which is a pity. So I, I, I don't know what is the situation in at ISC, but I think you should have a, uh, you know, kind of an NPTEL course. Uh, I don't know how you must be really busy, but you know, on mechanical behavior, I think you should have a course on mechanical behavior. And I also like, remember you had given me access to your FEM course that you offer. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, so my students also go through that and they find it really, really very useful. Uh, okay. So I, I just have a small suggestion that whenever you find time, please do, you know, kind of think about delivering an NPTEL course on these two things, because th those, uh, you know, th there is no proper course on mechanical behavior. Uh, a proper NPTEL course and the other course is on like the FEM for, I think you call it FEM for material scientists, right? Yes, yes, like, because it's a, so, because we don't go into very, you know, equation deriving mode, we just use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think, I think that is the need of the hour, you know. Uh, Shikhar can tell you, isn't it Shikhar, like that is, you know, equations scare our students. So we would uh, like yeah. to have that, you know, you should really think about having an NPTEL course on these two things. Uh, sure. I don't know what is the situation and you must be really very busy, but if you can find some time, there will be many tickets for it, you know, so that, that, that's, 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 humble... that's, that's, that's a good suggestion. So, so, so tell me, miss, the good thing that is happening this year is that we are also, you know, doing this online teaching. Right. So right. the videos are kind of recorded. Mm -hmm. So we can actually, but of course, uh, teaching for classes and teaching for NP, NPTEL is a little different in the sense that NPTEL you have to be very serious and <laughs> Not only, you know, yeah. whereas That's in the class, true. you know, you go on tangent here, there, you know. Right. So right. maybe with some editing of those videos, I will, I'm thinking of editing those videos and putting it on some place where people can access it. No, no, that's those are already always, always there, already there. So I will, I will see if we can, we can do something about it. Yeah. Right. And who knows? Next semester will. Next semester, I'm teaching a FM course. Oh, okay. So again, who knows? We will have a. <laughs> our next semester is online. Uh, it is already uh, our our, our next semester is going to start actually in uh, in March. March. Oh, so oh, we March. To, because we are starting. We we did it this time in October, right? Our first October. Oh, our first. Okay, okay. We we are now moved back. So our summer will go away. Okay, huh, huh. So we will we will see. So uh, we will see if the March is any time where the students can really have. A, I don't know. I, 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 chances are low, at mm. least. That is true. We'll see. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. I mean, I, I will certainly you know, do something like that. Yeah. I will be editing my videos and putting, I was, that's why I'm making these videos also. So uh -huh. that we can edit them and put them, you know, on, our, on my webpage or someplace where everybody can access it. No, that will be great. So, yeah, that will be great. But it requires some editing, you know, it requires some editing. Mm -hmm. it cannot be just directly put it there because some of those things you cannot say. In, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We have to edit, but after that, I will. I will see. Because of course, NPTEL is always a always an option. Yeah. So, okay, so thank you very much. It's thank been almost much. like one and a half hours. For thank you for all your time.
and we look forward to more interactions with you okay yes 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 okay, please Pravin. please do keep this communication channel yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay yes yes definitely okay pravin yeah. take care then bye bye thank bye you. thank you bye sir bye. thank you so thank much you. sir thank you monique thank you very much